back is turned to him at the time. You couldn't have known any of this, right? <laughs> Welcome to Improving Parent-Child Relationships. As we will see in this episode, Amy loves being a mother. But sometimes she finds being involved with her child is so fulfilling that it's hard to separate from him. Amy is working on helping Evan to be more self-reliant. We begin by reflecting on the joy and confusion of being a parent. No matter what you didn't or did do in life, no matter who you did or didn't pick in, in marriage or in love or however you did or didn't please your parents or whatever else went on anywhere in your entire life, you have this. Mm -hmm. You have a son. You have a child. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing in that picture. Absolutely. About. Absolutely. And so that ends up for all of us being kind of a plus or a minus. It sometimes means confusion because, because I love that so much. It's sometimes hard to pull away from that. And there's a few times that I've actually forced myself upon people who didn't need me because it is so fulfilling to be like that and to be part of that and to have that. and to, It's wonderful, isn't it? There are times I actually thought, usually this would be when I'd be rocking my baby at night, and I think, if I could be frozen in time, this would be it. Did you ever think that? Well, I think other people think <laughs> that too, because it just seems so correct. And of course, none of us really get frozen in time. And then sometimes it's very confusing to straighten out, if I'm not that, I mean, if I'm that, what else am I? Because this is such a terrific piece, then sometimes other things get dwarfed, other people get dwarfed, and so it becomes, it's very confusing to have children, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. You play so well with that, and don't put it in your mouth, and then you get your balloon. You can hold it with your hand, not in your mouth. a rule here, right? What, what exactly was the rule? The balloon doesn't go in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Why do you have this rule? To keep him safe. Because babies should eat balloons. That's right. probably a good rule. This seems to be definite with you. That mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, you're really sure this is a good rule. Right. So you're acting on your rule. I don't see any lectures here about balloon and plastics and chewing and choking. And so as you look at yourself right now, what, do you remember what you were thinking about? I thought he was probably going to be unhappy, mm -hmm. but because it's something that a scenario we've gone through before, I thought mm -hmm. he probably, probably pretty un understood it pretty well and was okay. going to say, "Okay, well then it happened again." Okay, you know, same so thing. So you have confidence happened. he'll get this, and you're pretty sure you're going to do it, and you're willing to weather the storm if there's going to be one. Right. Right. That's probably very good. Not your mouth. Does your mouth hurt? Does that make you feel chewy? Would you like a teaver? Do you like a teaver? So we, we learned some things here about you. We learned that you're no pushover, and once you make up your mind and it's clear, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And we learned some things about him, which are very important, which is that he can accept that when he understands it and is clear and he doesn't see ambivalence about you. Mm -hmm. When parents are clear and firm about simple rules, children will usually cooperate. <laughs> It's the horsey. Yeah. It's the horsey. Oh, no. Okay, sweetie. It's going to make supper. Probably, in your mind, it's time to go do something else. Right. So you're leaving him with the thought that he'll be doing his own play. Mm-hmm. Now, as you leave, <laughs> you pat him on the back. Mm-hmm. So what's your thinking about patting him? Just a... Uh, It's just kind of a, the hug before I go. It's a love pat. It's a love, yeah. It's a love yeah. pat. And I believe that little children this age need a lot of those. Right. I mean, that's part of bonding and being together. Something to think about is 
when to do this because your intention here is to leave and mm -hmm. for him to be self-sufficient right and I think maybe connection at the end might kind of draw him toward you or have him thinking of you right. at a time when you want him to be thinking of something else right. and yet it really is almost a knee-jerk reaction isn't it because mm -hmm. He's so adorable, he's so cute, and he's so yours. Right, yeah. right. Just kind of an assurance thing almost, sort of the unspoken, it'll be okay. See, and I'm, I'm not great. sure at that point who we're assuring. I mean, in my case, I'd be reassuring me. <laughs> but I don't know if he needs it. And so here we are already at this age at the knees business. Does he need reassurance or can right. he know himself he's going to be okay? Getting his attention as I'm leaving is not the best, yeah. the best thing. And there are times that... Love him though I will, I probably won't pat him. Offering attention when leaving may draw children away from independent activity. lost his farmer. You're concerned about that. You're a nice person, a nice mom to be concerned about his farmer. So he's kind of sizing that up a little bit there, right? He's dropped yeah. it. You're concerned about it. Mm -hmm. And I, what, I'm, what we're going to see in a minute is I think you're having a little struggle with how you've been involved to get with this farmer business too. Right. There. He's behind the table, Nick. definitely dropped that farmer on purpose. <laughs> yeah. I think the first time it really was yeah. an accident. Yeah, because his attention was kind of it. somewhere else. Yeah. But then I think, isn't it amazing at 14 <laughs> months old how well he keeps track of movement and it registers with him, she cares about farmers. <laughs> 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 so let's just drop it a second time and see if we can get the unit to, to pick it up again. <laughs> And I, I just think this is amazing, isn't it, in it terms is. of a little child's sense of movement and how closely they watch it. <laughs> I didn't even think. Well, I see now. <laughs> it's just hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> but see now here, your back is turned to him at the time. You couldn't have known any of this, right? But now looking at it, what do you think about this little innocent guy? Well, dropping the farmer over here doesn't work, so I'll put him back where Mom got involved. Maybe she only gets it over there. Are you hiding the farmer again? Farmer plus chair equals mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think at that point I was kind of starting to get it as far as, you know, he's doing that because he thinks it's yeah. going to get me my attention. Yeah. And I think that's the way things happen to us most of the time that we, it goes on a little bit, we miss it, it goes on a little bit more, and then finally we get it. Pattern. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly true. Never underestimate children's ability to learn what you will respond to. have things the way you wanted them, what would you be doing now and what would he be doing now? He would be playing. Okay. Would he be playing between you and the stove or in <laughs> another room or at somebody else's house? Or he could be playing. <laughs> he, could, he could be playing in the doorway to the kitchen or okay. even on the kitchen floor in front of the sink. Just uh, kind of Just give me that three feet perimeter especially because the stove is on and I'm cutting yeah. something. He's in, in your square. You yeah. don't want him in your square. Mm -hmm. So here you have a little bit of a management problem. Because it isn't easy to keep him out of your square. Right. So what are your thoughts about what you would want to do about this? 
it's it's hard because I'm really conflicted as mm -hmm. far as and and I know that's where I fall down is Share I want I want us. him <laughs> I want him to know how important he is yes. and I want him to know that he has my attention and because I work all day and I'm away from him I have some guilt about oh, the time yeah. we get to spend together and so it's what if every moment isn't quality exactly well exactly you know it probably isn't going to be every moment's quality but but I don't know if this is what you have in mind for quality either so no. sometimes <laughs> we, we think we're getting something we're really not getting here right. um, I see parents vary in this a lot some people uh, they have a playpen but for me it was it was sort of a management problem that I needed a place sometimes that was safe so I could pick up the phone or I mm -hmm. could do something. And yeah, uh, sure. Some people have little stretch gates where you know, maybe they're out of the immediate area. You do have a little bit of a management problem. What do you think, what do you think fits with who you are? Um, probably, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just really, really want him to get it and do it. Well, <laughs> how will he get it? <laughs> and right, what, first, right. what's the it he's going to get? Let's be sure we're clear about that. Um, that it's okay for mom to be doing one thing and him to do another thing and sometimes he can't be picked up so you want him to get that I it. want him to understand <laughs> okay how is he gonna get it ideally he's going to realize you know it is no fun just hanging out by mom's feet and mm -hmm. I've got the world of toys in the other room so you're waiting for him to have a psychological breakthrough <laughs> that at some point he's going to realize this is no fun but you know what I think I think from his point of view it this is, is going to be great fun for a good many years to come and you're going to get tired of this way before he does right that's what I think and I think this is a little bit like the balloon I mm. think in, in that's why I see these things as being related because right. in the case of the balloon you had no feeling of ambivalence the difference between the situation is there you really know you're on okay ground Right. And I think you're on reasonable ground here, too. I, yeah. I think as he gets a little taller, you really don't want him between you and the stove. You're going to mm -hmm. be having cooking things, boiling things. Right. People who cook do stuff like that. Sure. Um, and so you want it to be very clear. It's going to become a balloon sooner or later. Right. Should you have to work under these circumstances? Do you really want to cook and cope at the stove? No. Well, then why would you do it? I mean, you're, you're so pleased to have him. Mm -hmm. And it is a wonderful thing that you have him. But there are a few things that maybe you're not going to be shoulder to shoulder with him, marching through time, washing the dishes and cooking. And, you know, there, there may be times when you need to do something, and he isn't going to be part of it. But I think he's going to be part of your life so much, he's going to be so frequently the focus, that the few times he isn't, it's going to be okay. Right okay for you and okay for him and that he'll learn he can be okay without being with you every minute right yeah right some management problems may require physical solutions like gates or play pins most children need training in self-reliant behavior parents should be able to do things without children's constant involvement can you turn the drum? are the favorite toy. Mm -hmm. So given the ability to choose either one, I think he's going to choose you every time, which is good, I guess, mm -hmm. sort of. Sort of, yeah. Uh, but probably if you had some way to just have him nearby playing, he'd be able to see you, right. but he'd be more likely to be interested in the toy because that's what's more available. You're, mm -hmm. you're pretty available to him right here. Right, exactly. And I don't know. Now, where are you with your guilt feelings about this? Because shouldn't you be available to him every minute? You've worked all day. He's been gone. He's been separated. He's been without his mother. Um, from moment to moment, it can vary. Mm -hmm. What would be confusing or not to him? Because I think if it's clear to him that when you're cooking dinner, I'm over here behind mm -hmm. the baby gate, in the playpen, behind the table, whatever it is you do to make it manageable. Mm -hmm. That's predictable to me, and I understand it. 
What I'm going to have a little more trouble understanding as a young child is that we're going to base this on how you feel. Mm -hmm. And some nights you may feel guiltier than others, and some nights you're more tired than others, which accurate, I mean, it may be accurate. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. probably are some nights when you're more tired than others and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for him to know that, and so he has a hard time figuring out where he's going right. to be about things. Sure, sure. It's not consistent. You, you'll see at 14 months, his ability to do things like be self-sufficient change. So what I would try is, is playpen, fence, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. going to try this for uh, the first five minutes. I'm going to cook a little bit, and then, then I'll just kind of watch how he's doing. If he's doing okay and I can kind of see over my shoulder he's fine, I might leave him just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Or if I can see that maybe he's, he's gone through the three or four toys in the playpen, maybe I'll just walk by and kind of drop another one in, right. but I'm not going to say anything and I'm not going to get all wrapped up in him. I'm just going to help him be a little more self-sufficient. Right. Develop consistent expectations and routines. Increase self-reliance gradually. crying here is not in your ideal view and th the reason that I that I pointed out is because I think sometimes we have the fiction of here we are cooking dinner and they're peacefully beside us playing with their little toys or the pots and pans and that really isn't how it is most of the time right? right and so maybe it's even more ideal that you're doing what you need to he's nearby being self-sufficient and you have some points of connection mm -hmm. okay. mama. Mama, mama. You know what? Supper is done. Woo! We made it. some good chicken. That's easier to pick up with a spoon. Ah. <laughs> 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 Life's just rolly stuff. Try again. You know what the sure thing of the fingers? Tell us a little bit about what his eating skills are. What does he know how to do? What does he not know how well, to do? Well, you know, it's very interesting. He goes to school, mm -hmm. and at school, he sits at a little table in a little chair. And he well, has a little dish, and he has a little cup. And they don't do, do, do utensils yet, but he just feeds himself. And when he's done, he signs for more. I talked with his teacher about it. I said, you know, he throws food, and it's a totally, and she was like, Oh, never. And so he's capable of much more than he shows me or But now that you see this other snapshot of him at school, mm -hmm. how would you change this? What would you do? I just need to be brave enough to to set up the same situation and what would you do if you were really brave enough? Give him a dish? Well, and what kind of dish would you give him? Fine china? No. Maybe? No. He, and he has little bowls. Little plastic bowls. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, brave enough, what would he do with that plastic bowl were he to have one of his very own? He very well might hurl it across the kitchen, and full of food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many times do you imagine he would do that? Probably not too many times if it was taken away from him and dinner was done. I guess so. Those are hur those who hurl are done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also, yeah. I mean, you, you can probably see when he's beginning to kind of play around with it. I mean, I, I'm mm -hmm. guessing that at his school, you could certainly ask, but his little preschool, when he demonstrates he's playing instead of eating, he's done. Exactly. I mean, he probably has that idea. Exactly. So, brave enough, what else do you have to have the courage about? There's the Letting him hurling. do it himself. It's stepping back. It's cutting yeah. One, yeah. one of the connections. Right. 
it's satisfying to kind of feed a child and have them respond to you. And mm -hmm. so there's a little feeling of loss around this, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the baby's yeah. going to eat for itself. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. right. And yet I'm sure there are lots of other ways to be connected with him. So sure. you're not going to lose inevitably. But I mm -hmm. think you're wise to recognize those kind of pulls and strains within yourself. Right. Yeah. Are you brave enough to face it? I think so. I think you I think are too. I think it's time. I think he's ready. And I'm ready too. Okay. <laughs> Allow children to develop independent eating skills. Acknowledge to oneself if there are feelings of loss in growing independence and separation. this to be? I just want to eat. It's been a long day um, and I would like him to be playing or doing something that he wants to do. I like the idea of special toys for the high chair. It is reasonable for you to want to be able to eat your dinner. It really is. And of course he's pretty cute and he's learned the word up and there's all kinds of things like that going on but mm -hmm. it's reasonable for you to establish that separation from him. And it's hard to manage because there isn't anywhere for you to put him where he can't come right back to you. Right. And so you'll get tired of this really quickly. Right. In fact, I'm guessing you're somewhat tired of it now. Right. Right. I think you'll solve this pretty easily for yourself. Parents need to be able to do some things without being interrupted by their children. point of view, happily playing with your toys in your little space is preferable to going through that kind of misery. Right. So it really is kind. Even and, and I think the reason I'm bringing that up to you is that I think when you have these conflicted feelings sometimes it's hard to see that sometimes doing the firm thing is doing the kind thing because it's going to save what could be going on here. I understand that you're upset. I'm not going to pick you up on your Like what you did, you saw he was involved with something else, he's mm -hmm. got his little toy, that's great, and you're just going to make your exit, and he is keeping an eye on you. So here's the test. So as I'm looking at that doorway, maybe if that gate were right across that doorway, he yeah. realize that you're going to be doing something else mm -hmm. for a little while, sure, not sure. for a long time. Establishing effective management procedures leads to increased harmony.
Evan takes naps in his crib, but he co-sleeps with me. So we're going to go night-night, huh, Evie? Mm -hmm. Evie and Mama. <laughs> Your balloon. Is he on his way to now? Is he on his way to co-sleeping? Yeah. Okay. We'll go in, we'll lay down together, he'll fall asleep really quickly. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason I still do it is he just falls asleep mm -hmm. like magic. And uh, then I get up and I go and I have my time for myself. I believe that he would also learn to go to sleep in his crib without crying. Maybe it is okay that he goes to sleep in your bed and you move him later. Uh, my prediction would be there will be a time when that will become hard for you in some way because it's too complicated or because he wiggles too much. I mean, sometimes children aren't entirely good people to sleep with. I mean, they wiggle, they turn, they wet the bed. I mean, there's stuff that goes on with them mm -hmm. that maybe later you're going to decide, I don't know whether he likes this or not, but I'm not sure that I do. Right. And then it would be time to do something about it. So I think you will decide all that, but I don't think it's the main issue here. Each parent needs to decide when the benefits of something are outweighed by the problems it creates. Things of all we've talked about, what do you think would like to be your focus? Um, probably, well, the, one of the easiest fixes I think would probably be trying a gate mm -hmm. to the kitchen mm -hmm. and by limiting his choice to be at the bottom of my mm -hmm. feet when I'm at the stove, I'm sure that he will find you know, find something else to do. Find happiness on the mm -hmm. other side of the gate. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you said the word easy fixes, and, and in some ways it is. You go to the store and you buy a gate. Right. But in some other ways, it really isn't that easy because it involves so many things, doesn't it? I mean, it involves how you feel about separation, mm -hmm. how you feel about his independence, the loss of the constant companionship, and yet the relief mm -hmm. of not having the constant companionship. Right. Uh, it, it means a lot of things, and mm -hmm. it means feeling okay about what you're doing, and that you're standing on okay ground for doing it, and that he could live with a little temporary, possibly, unhappiness, mm -hmm. because the situation between you and the stove and him isn't that happy anyway. No. So maybe you're just doing the kinder thing, but doing it sooner. Right. So, you probably identified with many of the situations shown. It's up to you to decide what would work best in your own family. Here are some of the main principles and skills in this episode. Avoid giving attention when leaving. Recognize the true goals of children's misbehavior. Children don't need to be involved with everything. Physical barriers may be necessary to promote independence. <laughs>